Yo guys, check out how easy it is to install this head unit. Hey! Check this out guys, I just got my hands on the Copyright 9 inch display. If you don't want to have to deal with tearing apart your dashboard to upgrade your head unit, this is your move right here. This head unit supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It also supports AirPlay and AutoLink. AirPlay and AutoLink are pretty much ways to screen mirror your phone onto the head unit itself. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto could both be used wired or wirelessly. That's a really good feature to have. Most head units don't support wireless Android Auto for some reason. I guess it costs a little bit more for the hardware. I'm not sure. If you look over here, phone link, that's pretty much what these four icons cover. FM transmitting, this is how your head unit is gonna play music through your car speakers. But if your car is new enough and comes with a built-in auxiliary port, you can use an auxiliary cord to hook up this head unit to your car and get a lot better audio. The head unit is HD 1080p and it's touchscreen, obviously. It supports a micro SD card and USB flash drive so you can load music, videos, and even pictures. You can even hook up a rear view camera. You can use voice controls in case you wanna do hands-free callings or text message people or even just search up a destination on the maps without having to type it in. Pretty cool stuff. Woo. So first thing we get is the head unit itself. I'm gonna put this to the side for now. We'll take a look at that later. So Carpy Ride provides two different brackets. This is a flat mount or base. So it's gonna be easy to just mount it onto a flat surface. And on the other hand, you get this suction cup mount, which offers a lot of flexibility. You could flip this arm forward or backwards. You can even extend it outward I think about, about one and a half inches. And even this little bracket that holds the head unit in place, it's a ball joint. So you can actually turn the head unit up, down, or even left and right, just so you can get your perfect viewing experience. We get a power cord. This is for a cigarette lighter port. Every car is gonna have this, so you don't have to worry about that. And they also provide an auxiliary cord. So just in case you forgot to buy one, yo, here you go. We get a uh, double-sided tape for this flat base right here, just in case you don't want to take advantage of mounting it with screws. And then we get an extra base for the suction cup mount. Now let's check out the head unit. If you look at the back, you see all these lines right here? There's actually a built-in speaker on this head unit. So you can play music through here. There's a power button up here, I guess just to turn off the display. It has a sensor for screen brightness. So if it's really bright outside, the screen is gonna get brighter. If it's really dark, like nighttime, then the screen is gonna dim all by itself. Along the left-hand side of the screen is where you'll find all the connection points. Up top, we got the microphone insert. We have the micro SD card, the camera in. So this is for the rear view camera. AV out, that's gonna be for the auxiliary cord. USB, this is gonna be for your flash drive, or if you wanna hook up your phone as a wired connection. And then DC 12V, that's gonna be your power source. Okay, so one big thing about head units, in my opinion, is the user interface. So let's walk through how the interface looks like and see if it's something that you like. All right, so this is the basic interface. On the top left, if you ever need to go back to the home screen, home button, next is the volume button. This is the Apple CarPlay icon, this means that I'm connected. Here's Bluetooth connections. You can tap on it and you can see which device you're connected to. This icon is the brightness. You can manually adjust it or you can turn on the auto brightness right here. Right next to the brightness setting, we get the background. This is the first background. That one looks really nice. So this is Apple CarPlay. When you plug in your phone through a wired connection, it'll open all by itself. There we go. If you're unfamiliar with Apple CarPlay, it's pretty much an app and it's gonna look the same on all the different head units. Unfortunately, you can't go to the app store and download other apps. It's only gonna load up apps that's already on your phone. So you can see it has Amazon Music, Pandora, Spotify, and Tidal. You could go down here and split the screen. It's gonna be 
your navigation and whatever music app you're using to play. So right now we're on Spotify. Any music app you use, it's gonna have the same exact layout. This is Pandora. Interface still looks the same. You'll know which app you're in with this icon right here. Now a quick tour with Android Auto. Just plug up your phone. You're gonna have to download an app to get this to work. So first you're gonna see the navigation screen. If you wanna go to your music player, just tap right here on the icon. Then the music player is gonna take up the whole screen. If you wanna go to the Android Auto interface, tap the circle right here. And this is Android Auto right here. It's just like CarPlay where you can't download apps. It'll load up supported apps. So, you know, we got Tidal, Amazon Music, Pandora, YouTube Music, and that's about it. As far as I know, you can't split the screen like Apple CarPlay. You're either gonna have your navigation with the music player on the bottom or just full screen the music player. Again, it's gonna look the same no matter what app you're using. So let's go to Tidal. Looks just like Spotify, right? AirPlay. Now, when I think of AirPlay, I think of going on my iPhone, opening up YouTube, and hitting this button so I can AirPlay to my TV. But that's not how this app works. This app simply allows you to wirelessly screencast my phone onto the head unit. So in order to get this to work, make sure there's no Bluetooth connection, tap on the icon, and you'll connect to the Wi-Fi right here. Once you're connected, you just drag down, screen mirror, and here you go. Boom. Now you can see it casts your phone onto the screen and it's not bad at all. Unfortunately, none of the streaming services work. Hulu doesn't work, Disney Plus doesn't work, Netflix or HBO Max. The only app that'll work is YouTube. But the issue with this is you have to keep your phone sideways. If you go back this way, it's gonna obviously copy your phone. And if you turn off your phone, it's gonna stop playing. So you have to leave your phone on and horizontal if you want full screen video. Now, if we get out of here, stop mirror, boom. Autolink will actually allow you to watch YouTube videos with your phone off. Autolink will work with both an iPhone and a Samsung device. But before you use Autolink, you have to go to settings, device manager, and set Android to Autolink. If you have iPhone, you have to set the iPhone to iOS mirror. So now when I plug in my iPhone, Autolink is gonna open up and it's gonna cast my screen onto the head unit. See, it's really fast. But here's the really cool part. When you go on YouTube, check that out, look. This is my screen on my phone and it's already full screen on the display. I could turn off my phone and it's still playing. That's freaking awesome. That's what I really like about this head unit. Now this is what AirPlay is about. It's supposed to let you use your phone normally and just cast the video to the screen. This is exactly what I would wanna do on a head unit. Now, on the other hand, when I hook up my Android phone, it does the same thing. It screen mirrors, boom, there you go. Boom, nice and fast, right? But the AirPlay feature doesn't work because AirPlay is exclusive to iPhone. So again, you have to hold your phone sideways. If you turn it off, it stops playing or it turns off the screen as well. Basically, this is literally mirroring my Android phone to the head unit and there's no way to cast it onto the head unit. So unfortunately, you have to keep your phone on if you're using an Android phone and horizontal if you want full screen. So next we got the equalizer. There's really nothing to brag about in here. Just like any head unit or car stereo, you could just adjust the equalizer or you could use a preset setting. This is electric, pop, soft, etc. The only other thing you could do in here is turn on this loud button and it's gonna amplify your music. But in my experience, it makes it a little too loud and it doesn't sound good in the speaker. So I just keep that off. Over here for Bluetooth phone, there's no instructions on how to set this up. But if you're not using Android Auto or CarPlay, you should be able to Bluetooth to your head unit using your smartphone and it'll work just as if you're using CarPlay or Android Auto. USB flash drive and micro SD cord. They both work the same way. The interface both look the same on either one. If you don't have a phone that uses CarPlay or Android Auto, these are a good alternative. Let's check out micro SD card. As soon as you tap in, your music's gonna start up. You could go over here and you can see all the MP3s on your SD card. On the left-hand side, you could go to photos, 
This head unit supports JPEG and PNG files. It's a little slow though. Like I have a fourth one and look, see it finally loaded. <laughs> you can tap on the pictures and press play. It'll do a slideshow, which it's kind of neat, but kind of useless in my opinion. It would be nice if I could set this as a background maybe. I feel like they could do more with this photo area. Maybe like have a slideshow in the background when you're on the home page. That'd be cool. I mean, it might take a lot of processing power, but that'd be a really cool feature to have. And videos, it supports MP4s and MOVs. This is an MOV file. Nice shots. Next, we got FM transmitter. This is one of the biggest features on the head unit, just in case you don't have an auxiliary cord. You'll go in here, and this is a station you'll set your radio to in order to play music. You can toggle on this feature by tapping right here, off and on. You can easily swipe left and right to set a station. And if you want to save it, just hold on here and boom. Settings, there's not really much you can do in here. The only useful setting I see in here is device speaker. You could turn off the speaker on this head unit because if you're listening to music on your car and you turn down your music, your car speakers are going to go off, but the head unit speaker will stay on and keep playing your music. So I just keep this feature off just to avoid that situation. <laughs> and now my final thoughts on the Carpy Ride 9 inch display. Surprisingly, there's a lot of things I actually like about this head unit. The user interface is really nice and simple. It resembles Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The icons and text is really big. So it's really easy to just glance at the screen and just tap on wherever you need to go. Next, I didn't really think I would like this, but because it comes with two brackets, you could really mount this anywhere on your dash, on your windshield, on a really curvy surface or a flat surface. And on top of that, because this is easy to remove, you can actually just tuck this away somewhere or take it with you in case you're worried about someone potentially breaking into your car to steal it. I also really like that it supports both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you're thinking about upgrading your head unit, those are the must have features for any head unit really, especially if it's a touch screen, because you wanna take advantage of a nice big screen with a nice elegant display, because everyone has a nice smartphone. And why not have a head unit that looks just as nice and elegant as your phone, right? And on top of that, remember, you can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with a wired connection or Bluetooth. You're gonna come across a lot of head units that don't support wireless Android Auto, so. It's pretty cool that this supports both. I really like how you could keep your OEM setup and your volume knob. This is a real big thing to me because look, if my music is playing and I need to turn it down real quick, easy. Because it's a lot slower to go up here and adjust the volume. Whereas I could just go in here and It's a lot of steps to do while you're driving. The built-in FM transmitter is a really unique feature. I haven't seen this on another head unit. So the fact that this is portable and could be put in any car, it makes a lot of sense that this could play through your FM radio in case you don't have an auxiliary port or maybe you forgot your auxiliary cord. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, my most favorite feature on this head unit is AirPlay. Not the AirPlay app, but AirPlay from your phone onto the head unit using the auto link. When I was in the market for head units, that's the one thing I really wanted to know. If I could go on YouTube on my phone, select the video and just play it on my head unit. So that's what really got me sold on this head unit. And now onto the negative things about this head unit. The only thing I dislike about this head unit is that there's no way to download additional apps because there's other head units that have the Google Play Store and you could go on the Play Store and just download whatever app as if you had an Android device. But on here, you're limited to just these apps. If this head unit had the Play Store, you could download those streaming apps such as Hulu, Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, and you'd be able to watch the movies on the head unit itself instead of through your phone. I believe that's a really big and necessary feature to consider when buying a head unit because if you buy a head unit with a big screen, first thing that comes to mind is, can I watch movies on it? So without access to the Google Play Store, well, we can't watch movies, <laughs> but you could screencast from YouTube using your iPhone. Another thing I dislike about this head unit are the exposed wires on the side. I have the auxiliary cord, my phone connection and the power cord. 
I'm always gonna use the phone connection because I do want my phone to charge while I'm driving. I mean, you could try to tuck this away and make it look nice, but just having to deal with these exposed wires, is kind of an eyesore. Now, do I think this is worth your money? <sighs> Currently on their website, it's going for about $240. And I think you could go on Amazon and get a $50 discount. And it's probably about $240, maybe a little less. Considering that there are other head units that could do the same thing and more at a lower price, I think this is a little on the higher end, but I also think this is perfect if you don't want to tear apart your dashboard or maybe you want to upgrade the head unit for your grandfather or somebody because more than likely they're going to ask you to install it and it's going to be so simple to set this up. And so I would say it's situational. It just depends on what you want in a head unit and what you want it to do. Me personally, all I really care about is Apple CarPlay and screencasting YouTube to the head unit. And this does both of them. So I definitely recommend this head unit if those are two key features that you're looking for. And there you have it, the CarpyRide 9 inch display. If you have any more questions about this head unit, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Or if there's another head unit that you want me to review, comment down below and let me know and I might check it out. But all right guys, thanks for dropping by. See you on the next one. Boosh.